guys uh, today we've got a monster job um, see the shaft here at this approximately 18 inches diameter and I have to cut it so uh, we'll cut across the top at the smaller diameter since there's a small oil passageway uh, we'll aim to break into that to let the molten uh, metal run away from us and then uh, wash down the side to the bigger diameter and then work our way around. Um, fortunately we don't have the biggest uh, burning nozzle required. Um, uh, there's some very impressive videos on YouTube of uh, scrap processors cutting That was the hole I was hoping to let the slag run through, but unfortunately it locked up. So that's all the slag cleared off the stub. I guess it's a bit better clear, uh, shot of what's left to cut. Uh, approximately 18 inches in diameter, so I'm going to melt it down a little bit closer to the collar. And then when it's down close to the collar, we turn it up on its side and come in from the bottom. So clear all the slag away. <coughs> That's some of the molten metal. I've always wanted to get let loose with a, an oxygen bank. One, two, three, four, five, 15, 15 oxygen bottles in there. So just keep feeding it rods. Uh, just keep burning. So I'm going to try a full length rod this morning. Uh, I usually cut them in half uh, to make them a bit more user friendly when we're trying to do it in a precision job. Because this isn't a precision job. So this is a thermal lens, this rod, and um, all it essentially is, is a collet to hold the rod and an oxygen uh, hose with a valve, simple as that. The rods simply act as a sacrificial burning medium. Uh, you, you heat the end of the rod till it's red hot with the burners and then you turn on the oxygen and that keeps the burning process going then whatever you point it at you create a hot spot on that metal you, you point it at as per normal oxyacetylene cutting and you turn the oxygen on and that uh, melts the steel so incredibly the entire cutting process so the oxygen flows down through this rod which is packed with little little iron rods uh, round and then that lets the oxygen flow down the gaps so that is essentially the diameter of your cutting nozzle and the size of the oxygen flow that flows down the rod. The rods are three meters long and uh, they're used for heavy scrap processing, cutting extremely thick material. And the only limiting factor to how thick a material you can cut 
is basically your oxygen flow and pressure. In this case we have a large bank of uh, 15 bottles. Um, this job's difficult because of the angle of approach. The, the shaft stub is below the height of uh, the outside working edge, which means you have to work at a shitty angle. And uh, professional scrap processors will be looking at this video and thinking, oh, he's making a shit job of that because it can't do a nice, clean, straight slip. Three feet. So the shaft's three feet long. What diameter is it? The small end. Three feet long by foot diameter on the small end. <clears throat> I reckon it's about 18 inches this side. What's it coming in at? Ah, 18 inches. Yeah. So three feet of solid.
approaching the edges. Uh, we'll just wash some more out. We want the thin area to be as big as possible. Um, it's easier to control heat when the thin area is bigger uh, for wash. So that's it opened out as far as it can go with a totally non-precision tool and I'm quite pleased with the results. Um, I managed to just melt through to the bore, hopefully without damaging it. <coughs> you can see the bore there and there and the same on the other side. Melted through to the bore there, and uh, as you can see, we have been able to tap it in with a sledgehammer, and that's it. Uh, therefore, loosened, ready to hammer out and replace with a new shaft, which will be shrunk in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Bit of a mess from this side. Uh, we'll shrink the new shaft with liquid nitrogen. This will contract it down and allow it to fit inside the bore. And then when it returns to room temperature, it will be an extremely tight interference fit. We'll, uh, we'll use the conventional oxyacetylene cutting torch just to melt out the last few remaining uh, flakes of uh, the shaft and uh, that'll look so nice satisfying little job this morning um, got the oxyacetylene kit set up and um, just melt melted out the final little piece holding it in and as you can see it's closed right in it's loose now had to use a straight cutting torch it's very useful piece of equipment lets you work straight on down into a hole where a right angle 90 degree head wouldn't easily allow you to work in and uh, cut the last bit out folks one shaft removed and the bore is completely intact completely intact so I'm very happy with that result So, <coughs> next we'll see uh, the new shaft being frozen in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Shrink it down to size to be installed. We have a look at the old shaft. 
you can see where it appears to have been moving a little bit in the bore there where it's tight where it's nice and shiny the black area where it's been flexing a little bit over years and years of many hundreds of thousands maybe even millions of cycles these crushers exert tremendous force every single cycle thousands of times a day it's not uncommon to see shafts this size broken beautiful beautiful totally unmarked very happy with that well I'm not gonna lie it wasn't particularly easy um, reason being because we're trying not to mark the bores that the that the shafts come out of so when you're getting down to the very last bits on the side it's very 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 time-consuming you're literally Literally splitting hairs, trying to burn right along it. Nice little scrape here. Looks like a gouge, but thankfully it's just a scrape. And you can see the heat line where I melted it out. Little, few little marks down at the bottom step, but overall not too bad. So before the new shaft can be installed, uh, we put the entire crusher onto our uh, vertical bore, and um, the bore will be facing the uh, bearing surface and then um, probably checking the internal bore also maybe giving it a little clean uh, checking that it's not oval and then we'll take it out of the bore and uh, uh, prepare to fit the shaft we'll uh, climb up and have a look at the cutting tool That's where we have fitted a plate onto, onto the face and welded plug holes. You can see the plug hole where the weld is. The machine's slightly different texture. So once that's machined uh, to the correct size, uh, that'll be it ready. The bearing had worn down onto that face and that changes the clearances of everything that's then set on above it so we uh, pre-machine it, install a plate, take it back to original specification sizes. We need a very large capacity vertical bore to reach that far down inside the machine. Uh, also to actually swing the body of the crusher there's a uh, German vertical bore as you can see the, mer the manufacturer's birth eyes and I think it swings at least four meters
also has a horizontal cutting head and that's the vertical cutting head that's doing the work above the chuck is a sliding chuck it can slide away from the main column depending on the diameter that needs to be swung you see the locking bolts that lock it onto the sliding bed this is the new shaft that's to be fitted into the the body of the machine don't know how much it costs but I'm going to assume it was probably in the £10,000 range so it's absolutely critical that it does not get stuck halfway and we've set up a propane torch also to heat the body this will give us expansion of the hole so we will have expansion of the hole Expansion of the hole combined with shrinkage of the shaft to give us the clearance to insert it into the hole. We shrink the shaft in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Um, 600 litres of liquid nitrogen here, but we'll possibly need more. So the shaft will be submerged in this tank and the liquid nitrogen is minus I think it's 100 and 180 or 185 degrees um, this will shrink the shaft right down um, the, the shaft starts out at ambient temperature uh, when it's inserted into liquid nitrogen, it will make the liquid nitrogen boil like crazy. How we know the shaft has shrunk to its minimum will be when it's at its coldest. This is when the liquid nitrogen stops boiling. Uh, so when it stopped boiling, we know that it cannot get any colder and therefore it will be at its minimum dimension. So at that stage we raise it out of the tank of liquid nitrogen and we have a measuring gear uh, so we'll measure the outside of the shaft with an external micrometer um, they have already measured the inside of the hole with an internal micrometer um, and they uh, check the difference uh, based on what the clearance will be um, that's when the decision to insert will be made if for some reason uh, there's not enough clearance then the shaft may have to be reduced in diameter with the lathe or the hole opened up on the borer um, but generally both should be very close to factory specification which should result in uh, adequate clearance when shrunk uh, nevertheless extremely stressful job because um, if it's close if the clearance is not that large and it's close and they decide to insert it if it sticks halfway in the hole well then we will either have to try and press it out in which case pressing it out can destroy the internal bore um, so the decision may have to be made to destroy the shaft uh, so you're destroying a new component in the £10,000 range not to mention the time and materials required to burn it out so essentially you could be looking at a £20,000 uh, uh, unplanned event let's just say so very stressful job um, 
time has to be taken and everything measured exactly. So yeah, stay tuned uh, for the disco party as I call it, when we get the liquid nitrogen going. Uh, the entire floor will just be covered in uh, uh, nitrogen vapour which is completely white just like a disco smoke. So here we are about five or six hours after the shaft has been installed and uh, it's still icy in there and yeah she's looking pretty chilly Let's uh, climb up and have a closer look. The last time I was in here it was about 500 degrees. There's cold and there's liquid nitrogen cold yeah that's pretty cool so yeah that's pretty much it job done Been through quite a cycle of temperatures. Ready for the eccentric to be put in on bearings and breaking ahead. So, yeah, guys, uh, that wraps up this video. Um, really hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, something different from backyard mechanics, uh, from one extreme of fire to the other extreme of ice. Um, some really really heavy heavy metal engineering um, it takes a lot of time to throw these videos together um, I don't have much spare time with a, a new baby boy at the minute and um, just trying to scrape half an hour here and there when I can um, so if you guys enjoyed the video I'd really appreciate a thumbs up uh, helps keeping my channel grow and if it grows I'll keep making the videos uh, don't worry I'll not be begging you to buy my t-shirts or merchandise or crap like that just a big old thumbs up uh, tell your friends about my channel if you think they'd like it and uh, stay tuned for the next video I have a couple of massive uh, massive uh, jobs in the pipeline and uh, I'd love you to see them so if you want to see that click the subscribe button on the bell and that will notify you when the next video is uploaded so yeah guys as always uh, thanks for coming along um, stay safe and uh, I'll catch you on the next one over and out cheers guys